Pancreas. A healthy pancreas is spongy, yellowish tan, and about 7 inches long. It has a creaturely shape, with a large head that nestles into a loop of the first part of the small intestine, the duodenum, a longish body that squeezes behind the stomach, and a narrower tail that reaches the spleen see illustration. Physiologically, the pancreas wears two hats. It contains exocrine tissue that produces digestive enzymes, which are transported via ducts to the small intestine, and endocrine tissue that produces hormones, including insulin and glucagon. Over 90% of pancreatic cancers come from the exocrine part, and most of them are ductal adenocarcinomas, cancers that form in the lining of the organ's elaborate ductwork. Some pancreatic cancers are caught early, discovered incidentally on computed tomography CT, scans and other imaging studies ordered for unrelated reasons. That's apparently what happened in Ginsburg's case. But for the most part, pancreatic cancer is diagnosed after someone has symptoms, which typically include abdominal pain, weight loss, common with cancer but especially so with pancreatic cancer, and jaundice, a yellowing of the skin and the whites of the eyes from a buildup of bilirubin in the blood, which can occur when a pancreatic tumor impinges on the common bile duct. A major reason pancreatic cancer is so lethal is that the cancer grows and spreads long before it causes any symptoms. Surgical Candidates At the time of diagnosis, about 40% of pancreatic cancer patients have cancer that has already spread, metastasized, extensively outside the organ. Surgery isn't an option once that has happened. Another 40% of patients have locally advanced disease, the cancer hasn't metastasized, but it may have adhered to or invaded adjacent structures. The pancreas wraps around two large blood vessels, the superior mesenteric vein and artery. If the cancer gets intertwined with those blood vessels, that may preclude surgery. Locally advanced pancreatic cancer can be treated with radiation and chemotherapy, but the median survival time is 8 to 12 months. It's even shorter for people whose cancers have metastasized. That leaves about 20% of pancreatic cancer patients with tumors that are, in the words of cancer specialists, resectable, that is, they can be treated surgically. Most of these tumors are confined to the head of the pancreas or its extension, the uncinate process, and the Whipple procedure is the preferred operation. By the time the cancer is in the body or tail of the pancreas, it's usually too late to operate, although that's not always the case. The Whipple procedure. Pancreaticoduodenectomy, the formal name for the Whipple procedure, is a mouthful, so even doctors prefer the eponym. The procedure is named for Dr. Alan O. Whipple, the first American surgeon to perform the operation in 1935. Because resectable pancreatic cancer is limited to the head of the pancreas in most cases, you might think that the operation to remove it would involve taking out just that part of the pancreas. But the head of the pancreas is structurally tied into other organs and ducts, and it shares a common blood supply with them, so to remove it requires a much more extensive operation, namely the Whipple. A Whipple involves removing the head of the pancreas, the duodenum, the common bile duct, the gallbladder, and often part of the stomach. Surgeons then seal off the end of the small intestine and reattach what's left of the bile duct, pancreas, body and tail, and stomach. Patients typically spend a week in the hospital. The recovery at home can be slow and fairly painful, so painkillers of some kind are usually needed. Initially, Whipple patients can eat only very small amounts of food that are very easy to digest, and they may need to take pancreatic enzymes to help with digestion, particularly of fatty foods. Diarrhea can be a problem that makes getting out of the house difficult. But, remarkably, the rearranged and plumbed digestive tract manages to recover in two to three months. Last night I had steak and steak fries, and I'm doing pretty well, a 37-year-old patient told us in February 2009. He had his Whipple operation in October 2008. One variation on the Whipple keeps the stomach intact. Pylorus preserving Whipples The pylorus is the muscular opening of the stomach that attaches to the duodenum, reduce surgical time and, theoretically, improve digestion and nutrition. Surgeons at Johns Hopkins Hospital favor the pylorus preserving procedure, but Dr. Carlos Fernandez del Castillo, a surgeon at Harvard-affiliated Massachusetts General Hospital, said surgeons there don't do them for two reasons. First, studies haven't shown any long-term benefit. Second, patients are more likely to need intravenous feeding and stay in the hospital longer. 
The most common complication immediately after surgery is leakage of pancreatic juices from the remnant of the pancreas. This may be more of a problem for patients with healthier, more productive pancreases. Leaks can be treated with slender drains that channel the juices out of the body so they don't collect inside the abdomen. Dr. Fernandez del Castillo says a CT scan can help doctors decide if a leak is serious and needs treatment. More is better. Many studies have shown that the outcomes for an operation tend to be better at hospitals where those operations are performed often. This commonsensical relationship seems to be especially true of the Whipple procedure, probably because of its complexity. In one frequently cited study published in the New England Journal of Medicine, the death rate at low-volume hospitals, those where less than one Whipple a year was performed, on average, was four times higher, 16.3% versus 3.8% than at high-volume hospitals, more than 16 procedures a year. The same high-volume better outcome math seems to apply to surgeons. According to one study, operative mortality rates varied by a factor of nearly four depending on the number of Whipples performed by the surgeon, even at a high-volume hospital. Still an uphill battle the post-Whipple prognosis is brightest for patients whose cancers have not spread to nearby lymph nodes. For these node negative patients, the five-year survival rate is 25% to 30%. For node positive patients, it's only about 10%. Regardless of their lymph node status, most Whipple patients will get radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or both, to improve these odds, but cancer specialists haven't settled on the right combination nor precisely which drugs should be used. There have been encouraging results for a drug called gemcitabine. But another sobering way to view those survival percentages is to consider the larger percentage of Whipple patients who don't make it to the five-year mark. Randy Pausch is an example. He was diagnosed in the summer of 2006, had a Whipple and follow-up radiation and chemotherapy. Pausch was 47 when he died in July 2008. The improvements in the Whipple operation are a welcome development, but it's a relatively small step in the long, uphill battle against pancreatic cancer. What do you think? Please comment down below. If you like these tips and want to hear more, please subscribe to my YouTube channel.